the demand uh, obviously has increased in some of those markets uh, 100, 200 times normal demand. Um, and then on the supply side, we saw a lot of shutdowns of manufacturing. We saw export controls. Uh, we saw the um, international air transport system, of which we're quite dependent for movement of cargo, um, gradually shut down. Um, so we're at the point now um, where we need to look for uh, solutions to this. We need to streamline demand um, at country level. Uh, to really look at the highest priority um, to try and get the numbers to something manageable and coordinated. Um, the step two is collaborative procurement and amongst ourselves in the UN and some of our key partners um, is approaching the market together. Uh, this gives us a bigger voice, uh, particularly in a constrained market with a lot of intense competition. Um, the third part is allocation process based on vulnerabilities, on gaps and on critical needs. Um, and then the fourth step in light of the difficulties with transportation um, is to create a unified transport system. Um, and this is something our partners are, are currently doing, uh, particularly WFP. WHO, uh, in the meantime, did manage to source, acquire and distribute some 1.1 million tests. We have another 1.5 million on the way. Um, and then through the consortia, we aim to secure around 9 million tests. And this is collectively with the different partners um, and then allocate those accordingly. WFP uh, estimates that 20 million people are now food insecure in nine countries in the region. Ethiopia, South Sudan, Kenya, Somalia, Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, Djibouti, and Eritrea. We have done projection uh, about the situation there, about the number of food insecure people. And this number is likely to increase to 34 million, up to 41 million during the next three months due to the socioeconomic uh, impact of COVID-19. We are seeing at the border with um, uh, Rwanda and, and uh, Uganda, sorry, Uganda and Kenya, we are seeing long queues of trucks waiting because now govern, some government like in Uganda, Kenya and Rwanda are uh, taking the temperature, checking temperature of the truck drivers. This slows the, the delivery of food in the country. And there's enormous challenges um, and the longer we're, we're, we continue to face this situation, um, it's clear there are going to be repercussions outside of the COVID response. We already see UNICEF vaccine shipments, which are highly dependent on commercial uh, air cargo. We do see those having been disrupted in the month of May, if this in the month of April, sorry. If this continues into, into May, uh, there will be gaps in routine immunization and also in, in, in campaigns against uh, uh, outbreaks of other diseases. We're aware that uh, the difficulties of, of supplying Latin, Latin America in the beginning, and also at the time, um, the caseload wasn't high and we were concentrating in, in, in other areas. But I mean, certainly the situation has changed. Um, and as mentioned, we're in the process of now planning um, that the next uh, acquisitions and batch volumes we get, uh, at least in PPE, um, will be uh, making uh, their way in that direction, certainly. the Secretary General requested that uh, WHO convene a task force on these issues. Uh, this has been done. Um, and within the remit of that task force, we are now uh, increasing the capacity here in Geneva within the supply chain coordination cell for COVID-19. Uh, we're now joined by uh, partners from WFP, from UNICEF, from UNOCHA, um, and others uh, on their way.